Hello, lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. Welcome to today's Math Monday episode where we tackle exponential growth and parabolic growth. Woohoo! Well, wait, why this topic and why both of these together? It seems random, but it's not random. So, exponential growth crops up all the time, especially in conversations about population growth and currently right now during the COVID-19 pandemic. Exponential growth is a big topic and it's really important for us to understand it so that we can make reasonable and informed decisions. It also gets confused with parabolic growth sometimes, especially early on in time. And so it's important for us to do this comparison so that we can understand what exponential growth looks like, particularly compared to something that's a little bit easier for us to understand. So that brings me to my point three, Exponential growth can be hard for us to wrap our heads around, so by comparing it to something more familiar, it makes it easier to understand. Cool, let's get started. So first of all, I find my piece of chalk, and let's draw some pictures to help us better understand what these things look like. So parabolic growth, I'm gonna start with that one, looks like a smile, woohoo, so cute. So if we were to draw a picture on a graph like this, if this is X and this is Y, our parabola can be represented by an equation y equals x squared and sometimes you might have like some number in front of it um, like you could have 2x squared and this number which really could be anything so i'm going to use a letter any real number um, this number will uh, squish or expand the smile. So for example, it could be a really skinny parabola or it could be a really wide parabola, very wide smile. Um, and then if you add some other number here, like for example, if you add two, it would push your parabola up. And if you subtracted two, it would pull your parabola down. And I am drawing approximately, but it would maintain the same shape. So a more general format would be a x squared plus b. Cool. Exponential growth, I guess I should label this parabolic. Ah, I ran into my skinny parabola, my narrow parabola. Okay, and exponential growth or an exponential curve looks like this. So these two scales are going to be way off, but basically whoop, it looks like that. So it increases at a reasonable rate and then all of a sudden it takes off and it goes nearly vertical. And I don't know if I I kind of drew like it's looping back on itself, um, but it goes nearly straight up once it reaches a kind of threshold point. So again, we have X and Y, and the equation for this, possibly the most common equation that I have seen is Y equals E to the X, where E is a number two point, oh my gosh, I should know this, two point two something something something. Oh, my bad. I haven't looked that one up um, in a long time since I've done physics really. Uh, but E is just some constant like pi. And so you can really have Y equals, you know, two to the X, that's still exponential Y equals A to the X where A is some number. Um, and then you can also add things to it, et cetera, et cetera, um, or multiply uh, another number. So maybe the most general form would be A times B to the X plus C where a, b, and c are some numbers and x is your constant. Okay, so again, not on the same scale. And to better understand that, let's do an example. Yay! Cool, okay. So, I am going to set up my chalkboard space, hopefully, appropriately. Um, well, okay, let's first <laughs> do the word problem. Woohoo! Or our quote unquote real world problem. Okay, so, the first equation that we need is based on my example problem that we have a couple of bunnies and we are counting our bunnies to see how fast the population of our cute little bunnies grows. And we find that the population of bunnies doubles every 10 minutes. So this is an exponential growth rate. And I'm not gonna dig too much into that because it's built on top of the mathematics done by lots of other people that came before you and I. But basically the equation for that is as follows. The population, which I'm gonna label P1, you'll see why in a second. The population at a given time equals the initial population or P0 
and oftentimes this is uh, labeled P0 because that's the time at t equals zero or before you start counting. Um, times, since it doubles, that's where our factor of two comes in. And then t is our variable, aka the time that we are measuring the population after we started measuring initially, divided by 10 minutes, which is our growth vector. Um, the general form of this would be P0 times uh, 2T divided by tau, where tau is your growth factor. Okay, and so now for comparison's sake, let's say another team of researchers is measuring their bunnies, and instead of an exponential growth rate, they get a parabolic growth rate, and I'm going to roughly approximate this by saying we're going to add P0, because we're starting out with two bunnies, and it grows at this rate, where t, uh, we have t divided by tau, the same, the same um, uh, time factor, it's based on that. And instead of it being 2 to the t, it's going to be t squared, basically. Okay, so these are our two equations, and the researchers have to figure out whose population of bunnies is going to go blah, and which team is going to need a lot more people to do the counting. Cool. So at this point, I would challenge you to pause the video and determine for yourself. So make a table of values just like I'm going to do here, and then crank out the examples before I do them, because you can totally do this. So what we would do, um, I'm going to make my table over here. So the first thing would be to figure out, okay, at time t, whoopsies, we're going to use units because that's the good way to do it, t in minutes. And then we have our population one of t and our population two of t. <laughs> I got a fancy, fancy letter over there. Okay, so now we can check our boundary conditions or our starting conditions, I guess I should say. So at t equals zero, before we start counting, we only should have two bunnies. So we want to plug in zero into our equation. So for the first equation, p1 of zero equals, um, oh, and I should say p0 equals two. Our starting population is two cute little bunnies. Okay, so at time t equals zero, we have two times two to the zero minutes divided by 10 minutes. And this is just two, oh, I ran out of space, no, equals two times two to the zero, two to the zero goes to one, so we just have two. Boom, that's good. Okay, and our second equation is P2 of zero equals two plus zero divided by 10 minutes squared, zero squared is zero, and plus two is two. Woohoo, okay, good to go so far, and now, we can say, okay, well, what happens at 10 minutes? And since we said that the first population doubles every 10 minutes, then we should be able to guess what happens. So in this case, we replace zero with 10, and we plug that into our equation. So two times two to the 10 minutes divided by 10 minutes is just two times two to the one. Two times two is four, boom, no problem. And we do the same down here. We put 10 in for our variable t, or time, and we get uh, 10 divided by 10 is one, so two plus one squared, one squared is one, and we got three bunnies in the second researcher's bunny population. Okay, now what happens at 20 minutes? Uh, I'll do a few of these and then I'll stop doing them by hand, but I encourage you to do all of these until it makes sense. Okay, so um, in this case it simplifies two times two squared, 20 divided by 10 is just two. This is gonna be two times four or eight. And again, we have in the second population, we have two plus two squared, four plus two is six. Okay, so now I'm gonna stop doing them by hand and just list off these tables of values. So at 30 minutes, we have 16 bunnies in our exponential growth population and 11 bunnies in our parabolic. And I probably should label that. So EXP and para for parabolic. Okay. And let's see, after 40 minutes, how many bunnies do we have? 
We have 32 bunnies in our exponential population and 18 here. Okay, and 50, we'll go up to 60 and then we'll compare. We have 64 and 128. Ooh, okay, our exponential bunnies are really increasing their population. Okay, so 27 and then 38. Okay, so you're like, okay, that's not that big of a difference. I don't understand what the big deal is. Okay, 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 I feel ya. Up until now, they haven't really, the two populations, parabolic and exponential, haven't really changed that much. And, but this is where things get interesting, is where we let the clock keep running, we walk away, we go make some lunch, we get a coffee, whatever. We come back after two hours, 120 minutes, we find in the exponential population growth bunny category, <laughs> okay, we have 8,192 bunnies. That's a lot of bunnies. Meanwhile, the researchers in the parabolic growth category only have 148, sorry, 146 bunnies. <laughs> yes, that's math. Okay, so let's say the first researchers, this group, they take an hour to count all of the bunnies because that's a lot of bunnies. So now all of a sudden they have a hundred, it's 180 minutes have passed since they've started counting their bunny population. Now they have to count 500,020, wait, hold on, hold on. Let me write the number down before I say it. 524,288. That was a number sandwich. Okay, meanwhile, the parabolic bunny crew only has 326. So the exponential bunny researchers are like, oh my gosh, please come over and help us slash. At that point, I would probably give up because I'd be like, I can't do this by hand. That's when you get a camera and you start using the camera to track. So that's really what I wanted to show. I almost dropped the piece of chalk, but I caught it. <laughs> okay, so that's really what I wanted to show. Three hours later, the exponential growth has swamped the parabolic growth. And so even in the beginning where they don't look that much different, if you wait a reasonable amount of time, all of a sudden they are vastly different and the exponential growth just shoots way past the parabolic growth. So if I were to draw this, this is not to scale, please. Um, so exponential growth kind of increases slowly, but then all of a sudden, whoa, we're up to 500,000 bodies, wow! And the parabolic growth, it definitely increases. It kind of is, ooh, I can use a different color. We're gonna use green. So the parabolic growth is more like, Wah. but then it increases much, much, much slower. And actually it probably wouldn't even be close to that. It would probably look more like a flat line in comparison. But if you were to zoom in up until this point, they're not that different. Ooh, and like a good mathematician, I should label my axis. So this is population of T and this is time in minutes. So again, not to scale, very rough approximation. Okay. I hope that is helpful and I hope it helps to clarify what exponential growth is and what it means to have an exponential growth rate. It crops up a lot in population things. Um, so yes, it's a useful thing to know. Please let me know if you have any questions about this topic or other math topics and let's tackle them together. Go forth and learn all the things and take care of yourself because you matter. All right, see you next time, bye.